Welcome, everyone, to another Deadcast podcast by the fire. I'm here with my host, Demi Bobemi. Hell Would yeah. you believe it? Tonight's going to be an exciting night because we got the camera hooked up for just the fire and probably our little feetsies. I actually don't know the angle on this <laughs> camera, so it could be us completely. Yeah, it could be really wide. Who knows? We'll probably just be Demi, but um, if it did. But we're also burning trash tonight. <laughs> so it's going to be a blazing time. That sounds like very country. I burning guess so. trash. We're burning trash. I'm going to start off with two of these little cardboard triangles. Okay. I'm going to get ready with the grate. Yeah. I feel like that's going to be aggressive. Oh. Let me, yeah, there we go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> wow, really starting off strong, you know what I mean? <laughs> Got to start this stream off right. Fuck, not oh God. <laughs> I just said stream. Wow. I mean, gotta start this. Oh my God, it's like a chimney, look at that. I'm freaking out. <laughs> Good idea. Putting the grate on. There goes the GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> It just starts melting. Oh my god, I'm gonna melt. Holy oh my god, shit. I need to back up. <laughs> um, we're gonna get the cops called on us. Yeah. I didn't realize cardboard would fucking be that big of a fire. <laughs> it, it, there's, okay, we need to maybe not do that now. <laughs> Scratch that, we're not burning the trash. No, look, and then it goes down really quickly. It's just, it goes up really quick. Just really hoping none of our neighbors saw that. <laughs> Don't worry, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Our house isn't on fire. Oh my God, okay, that makes me nervous. Our fire alarm was going off today, guys. What? I don't know, I was wondering, like, is that like a weird sign from the universe? Oh, not to burn fire or burn tr our trash? Maybe, because I was just thinking it was so weird how our fire alarm went off. Yeah, our we fire alarm went off when we were just cooking food, like in the oven. It wasn't, and there was like no smoke. No. Like very, very light smoke, like normal smoke that you would get coming out of your oven when you're cooking. And then like there wasn't a real smell of smoke in the house. There wasn't like a visible smoke. We had our windows open and it was catching a breeze. And then it was just like our fire alarm would go off randomly. Yeah, that was weird. And then of course, cause it's like on a system they're all hardwired into each other. So then they all fucking go off. So that was a whole thing. Yeah, that was, I honestly can't wait to see what that flame looked like <laughs> on, oh, on the GoPro. <laughs> on camera? Yeah. Should we put more in there? Like, we'll put one in there. Yeah. And then instead of like putting it chimney style, we'll put it flat, you know? <laughs> Instead of, like, pushing all of the fire up to the heavens. There we go. That's probably That's, that's a way. Not the way. I just said that's a way. That's a way. That is a way. There we go. Much better. So this is pretty much going to be our <laughs> podcast. It's just burning shit. Um, so... Remember how Ashley showed us that we, someone posted our video on that forum? Oh yeah. Bookish got in. <laughs> oh shit. Um, so <laughs> she was like, my thoughts are that mistakes happen, but unlike Twitter, Facebook has an edit. You might want to give that a try. No, we cannot do this. It's only one at a time though, that way. Yeah. It's making me nervous. The other one was like this tall. Yeah, so it was chill. as tall as like the fucking thing. Look at that trying to get out of there. It's trying to escape. We won't let it. Oh my god, I realize Ashley put a gif that says, I know those guys. Because they said, um, when Harry hexes Draco and almost kills him, here is a Slytherin defending Harry and a Ravenclaw who can't get over that Harry almost killed someone, only gets detention, 
and yet is upset about it. What are your thoughts on it? Um, what are your thoughts on it? <laughs> I so badly, because I got into the group, I like so badly want to say something like just to be like sounds like a bunch sounds like a couple clowns yeah like they i just want to say something like talking about like stupid like about us yeah that's when someone's like hey that's demi because <laughs> like i did i introduce myself as demi bobemi or just demi i think you've always been demi bobemi okay i don't know where demi ends and demi bobemi begins anymore i don't know <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> I'm putting more wood on this bad boy. Okay. Oh, and that was our wet wood, huh? Yeah. So, but I was just, oh my God. But she was just saying, like kind of defending like our point about like the unknown magic. And then she said, hashtag bookish law. Hashtag fiend fam. <laughs> and I fucking love that so much. Everybody in that Harry Potter group is just like, what? And it was funny because this person's like, it sounds like you're getting rather defensive and I don't get why. Who is? The uh, bookish was. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds like you're getting defensive and I don't know why. And it's like... <laughs> Fiend fam, you don't get it. Oh, did you not see the hashtag fiend fam? Did you not understand the hashtag fiend fam? <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. Um, and then... Fiends are the best. I don't know. Uh oh, did we kill the fire with all that fucking cardboard? I hope not. That wood's on fire. Yeah, this wood's not catching now. Oh my gosh, and then... It needs to be elevated. Will you hand me the other pronger? Yeah. Other pronger. Thanks. You're welcome. But it's just like, it's funny to me because Bookish was talking about like being a Hufflepuff and they're like, she, so she said, Slytherin and the Slytherin and the Ravenclaw are outstanding folks. This sounds a bit like you're making fun. Hufflepuffs are fiercely loyal, so I got to stand up for my people um, and say, when in real life, if you attempt to murder someone, you don't get an attention. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, and stand up for my people. I didn't mention Hufflepuffs here, so who are you referring to as your people? <laughs> my fiends, you motherfucker. I just was tickled by that bookish you the best um we have a problem here this shit ain't lighting we're just smoking out the neighborhood uh-oh so no more burning trash yeah no more burning trash we have like one more piece of trash left too maybe i should get some more paper bags yeah our problem is we have too much trash in there <laughs> so let's get more trash in there. Well, I was saying to like help light the wood, unless we, we need to make need to kindling. It, no, we need to get it up off of the trash bags because it's hot enough in there that it should catch. But I'm trying to get this piece of wood up underneath these little guys, but I don't have enough hands. Okay, well, I have hands. Wait, no way. Yeah, would you believe it? I need this wood lifted up. Oh, and then of course, because there's a ridge right there, we go. Okay, you can like put that down. Whoops. Hey, something's happening. <coughs> Look, it's not as smoky now. Right. You did it. You saved us. Ow. You saved us all, Goku. Oh my God, that fuck, how? An ember landed right on my blister. Dude. So I have like a really bad blister on my hand, guys, from <laughs> jerking off. What was it from? I don't even remember what that blister was from. Oh, yeah, from mowing the lawn and raking. Mm -hmm. It wasn't from mowing the lawn. You keep saying, oh, you got a blister from mowing the lawn, you little pussy. But it was actually <laughs> from raking. Just the uh, 
mowing the lawn softened it up a little bit, you know? Yeah. And then raking, like, really opened up a blister, like, right in, right in between my hand. The like, crook. Right in the crook of my hand, like, right there. And, um, so I have a blister there. And an ember literally just landed right on that blister. You poor thing. Thanks for listening to my story. <laughs> I keep telling you to put a band-aid on it. Um, I want to let it dry out and harden up. Okay. I don't want it to keep it soft. It won't heal then. I mean, you just, I mean, not like keep it soft, but like you just put a band-aid on there so like stuff isn't getting into it. So it doesn't get infected. So it doesn't get like an ember on it. Yeah. It's not going to get infected. Okay. I have a banging immune system. I don't know if that's how that works. Just take ibuprofen. I'll be fine. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, I just. I love that, that the fiends are in a Harry Potter fan group and talking about fiends and being like loyal and shit. People are like, I'm sorry, I didn't say anything about being a Hufflepuff. What the fuck are you talking about? I, I just love that this person's like so confused by Bookish's standpoint. <laughs> But I also, can we just talk about how fucking weird it is that one of our videos was shared in a book, uh, Harry Potter fan group? Yeah, it's weird. It's like, starting to get attention. It's making me nervous. It is making, it's making me nervous because Warner Brothers is, and like J.K. Rowling is notorious for taking shit down. And so like, it, there's kind of like a double edge there of like you want the attention because mm -hmm. like obviously we're content creators we want our content seen yeah. but also at the same time like we don't want it seen because then at the same time like jk rowling could just be like no nah, that ain't that ain't chill yeah we just i just want it to be a little more low-key i wonder how <laughs> many people because there was 70 comments on that post <laughs> hope better have gotten 70 new subscribers <laughs> I was actually just wondering, like, if that did anything. Or if people were like, wow, I wish that girl would shut up and let that guy read. That's how, they, that's how everyone starts. Yeah. You know? It just makes me laugh so much because I had said something like that in the Discord. I was like, I should comment something like, oh, tell that stupid girl to shut up or whatever. And everyone was like, oh, like, trying to be like, oh, no, like, we love you, like, whatever. And it's like, yeah, but that's like how everyone starts though. They're all like, wow, I hate you guys, but I can't stop watching it. Tell that bitch ass hoe in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear. I was listening to Kids Bop. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. I'm like, no, I think it's funny. You know? But that's yeah. how everyone's like, we hate you. And then. They're like, we just kept hate watching you until we liked you. <laughs> and then we realized, like, we get what you're doing. <laughs> I get it now. But yeah, that was my story for you today. <clears throat> but um, if you guys know any uh, Aragon fan group pages, you know, be sure to share, right? <laughs> I feel like Christopher, would Christopher Paolini have a good sense of humor about it? Or do you think he'd be mad? I don't or know. Or is it even up to him? We did say that he was projecting his inner hentai, like, tendencies into his own series, so maybe try to keep him away from it. Because <laughs> he'd just be like, they're so dead on. How dare they call me out like that? <laughs> rude. <laughs> rude. That's all he'd say is just rude. I think I would die if Christopher Paolini commented like on our videos it was just like rude it like kind of would be cool though because we're like ramping up towards the end mm -hmm. if um because like we have more subs and christopher Bellini just saying <laughs> if we could get <laughs> him to either join with us for the last chapter could you imagine i be... get him to read the last chapter okay wouldn't that be like really cool can i just like say i know i like like my whole brand is to just like shit on the books that we read but I would be like low-key like fangirling 
a little. Because I do like the books. You're like, oh my god, you wrote this book we're reading. You know what I mean? I just think that'd be cool. Yeah, because we could just have them in the Discord while we're reading it. It'd be funny to have him interject things that he's like reflected on that he would have done different and been like, I don't know why I did that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That makes me nervous. Should try to reach out and see if I could do that. He probably would like look at it, pay no, never mind to us, you know? He might though. Um, I don't know. I've seen like on Twitter, he's like pretty, I mean, Twitter's like a different platform, but he like responds to a lot of people on Twitter and stuff. He had a kid recently. Yeah. <laughs> someone, someone fucking responded and said, I hope you named him fucking Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> what did you name his kid? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. I hope Kevin. It's, no matter what he named it, it's Kevin. It's Kevin. Because <laughs> um, Ashley showed me that, like, Twitter post. And she was like, I was just, like, dying laughing. That's hilarious. <laughs> She's like, she's like, I have like hope in my heart that it was like one of us <laughs> <laughs> that was like, I hope you fucking name him Kevin. <laughs> one of us fiends out there. <laughs> oh, she posted it in the Discord, so for people who want to see it, it's like there. Yeah, when I'm on, uh, when I'm working shift, I unfortunately don't get to be in the Discord as much as I want to. Mm. That's, that's stupid. That's a bummer about back to shift work. It's lame. <clears throat> I wish you could have Discord at work. Same. I might try um, popping out every so often when I'm at work and just popping in the Discord and trying to just be a little bit more active. Oh, is a Reddit post. Sorry, not a Twitter post. Oh, okay. Christopher Paolini responded to, I hope he named him Kevin, LOL, and said, ha. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's, I'm going to respond, but that's rude, you know? <laughs> he went, ha. Huh. I would just laugh, though. Like, if somehow CP, like, found our videos or something. I'd be very nervous. I would be very nervous. I'd be afraid that he would, like, take offense to it or something. That he wouldn't find it funny. Or that he would, like, be how everybody is at first. <laughs> hate watching like, I wish us. they just shut the fuck up. I wish that bitch ass who on the right would shut up. I'm on the right. You are on the Get right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one, huh? Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> but, yeah, I feel like the thought of our content getting more traction because like obviously like I don't know I don't see the analytics I don't see where people are sharing if they're sharing videos and so it just makes me nervous that like our videos are being shared and I feel like I don't know yeah it used to be like on top of comments analytics everything because at work mm -hmm. I could check I could monitor that stuff but they blocked YouTube at work, so. Like, literally, when I go to work, I'm just in the dark. I have Twitter and Facebook. That's it. I wish there was, like, somebody you could talk to. And, IT. <laughs> yeah, and just, like, justify YouTube. I feel like you had to have a pretty good justification for YouTube. What, schoolwork? Yeah. Yeah, I might hit them up and say, like, hey, my school, my online school is posting a lot of stuff on YouTube for me to watch for my classes, and I can't do it at work. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer when I work 12-hour shifts. Be like, I know you little IT boys work Monday through Friday and don't have to worry about that, but <laughs> guess what? Us big boys who actually work for a living, we do have to worry about that. Wow. Salt. The fucking shit. You guys just taste the salt coming through the microphone. Demi loves it. I love salt. It's my favorite. Speaking of um, just like YouTube and content mm -hmm. in general, get ready, everybody. This is kind of, I guess, like 
the first showcase of a different type of content on the channel. I mean, like, we're definitely still going to be reading, mm -hmm. obviously. We've never, ever said that we won't be reading, but we have always wanted to bring more different types of content on the channel. And so this is kind of, like, we've always had a dead cast mm -hmm. that we would do periodically. I think the last one we did was in, like, 2019. That was pretty recent. <laughs> Maybe it was 2020. But we want to do these because we've been doing a lot more like outdoor activities. Like we've been really trying to get outdoors and stay outdoors. Mm -hmm. So we want to do, because we've just been like sitting around the fire like every other night whenever we can. And it's like, dude, we could like totally just record like a little by the fire podcast. And so we want to start doing this pretty consistently maybe once a week yeah i mean we've been having a fire at least once a week so so yeah once or twice a week or not once or twice a week once or twice every month mm -hmm. would be good yeah and then that'll be like our dead casts so podcast mm -hmm. podcast by the fire and then um we since we've been outdoors so much and outside um, it's been taking away from time that we have to record and or stream. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're going to sacrifice streaming mm -hmm. to maybe make some like vlog type of videos, but so that we can still record our reading. So it's unfortunate that like on the dead inside Twitch, that that's going to take a cut. That's going to take a hit mm -hmm. as far as streaming goes. And that probably won't pick back up around until winter again. Yeah. When I the mean, weather gets like super shitty and we can't go back outside. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless like you want to do stuff like by myself at by night. Yourself, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about that, but if we are continuing to produce content, then I'll probably just be editing most of my nights. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like, I would have time to stream for, like, two hours. That might still do it. Like, if I get all of my everything, because I'm mm -hmm. also doing online school. Yeah. So if I get everything done to where I have the time that I could actually focus on streaming and do a stream, I might, you know, whip out the canvas and just do a little paint stream. I think that would be really nice. But it's going to be super intermittent. It's going to be a super hit or miss. Guess I never miss, huh? On my Twitch for <laughs> streaming, but on Demi, your plans. Is to stream a lot more. I mean, I have been. I have, even though I have not streamed at the time I've wanted to stream at, I've made a point to stream that day. Because it's a lot of fun, you know. I mean, I know you have fun doing it. You always tell me after you've done it, like, how much fun you had. It's fun. Because I like everyone that comes to hang out. It's like, I get to hang out with my friends and I get to... Since we don't really so. have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, like, so weird. Everybody online are our only friends. <laughs> our only, only friends. <laughs> only friends. There's <laughs> a new website idea. Instead only of friends. only fans, only friends. Hell Yeah. Oh my god. What would it be? Um, I don't know. Where only your friends. I don't know. That sounds like it's just turning into, I almost said MySpace. That's weird. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> First thing I thought you were going to say, where only your friends can send lewd pictures, and it's just oh all of your friends sending god. lewd pictures to each other. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> just like but all like, of your friends' buttholes. But you like subscribe to a group an only friends group for like, you know, like five or 10 bucks or something. And then like each picture that an only friend send is like unlockable for like a dollar. And then all of the money gets like pooled and then distributed evenly to all the members. Oh my God. That's actually kind of a good idea. That sounds weird. Cause I was just thinking of like my real life friends. What friends? I've won. <laughs> but like, I don't know. Just like how weird that would be. Like your friends just sharing their buttholes. <laughs> you know? 
Well, I mean, <laughs> it would be for the people that would be interested in that, you know? You'd be like, hey, yo, Jimmy, enjoy my only friends. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just weirded out. And it's just like set up exactly like Discord or something. I I think that that would make money. Shit, you better. This won't make Final it's Cut. It's too late. It's too late. Somebody else knows it. And they got it. I'd fucking die laughing if there was like an Only Friends app that came out or something. If if I honestly though, if somebody like makes this app and like makes it successful and it like works out like we please just give me a little cut <laughs> it's like a little slice of the just pie. like a little t like one percent or ten percent or ninety percent like just a little cut <laughs> i mean it was just like my idea but it's fine it's totally my idea is all um i don't even know what's like on only fans because like obviously that wasn't a weird jump because only Friends is a playoff of OnlyFans. <clears throat> yeah, OnlyFans is like Patreon. It's like literally copy paste Patreon. Okay. Because I'm not gonna lie, I was a little curious what all this, what all the hubbub was about. <laughs> and. Oh, you made an account? No, I didn't make an account. You checked it out. I just was like trying to like see what was on there, but because it's paid content, you can't see what's on there. Yeah, so. I was checking it out too. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's like you have to pay to see anybody's content, period. Everything's like locked behind basically money doors. Yeah. So. Which I was like a little bit like, you don't have like a, like a teaser. It's also like really confusing because like, I just went to like OnlyFans.com mm -hmm. and then was like browsing around and it was like, I just feel like there was like no direction <laughs> yeah. to where to go. It was like, is like, do you want to post stuff? And I'm like, whoa, 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 no. Like I have and really great like, feet, but. And it was like, like recommended channels and you like click on it. And then it's just every, like, you can't see anything. There's like not even like free pictures. Like, cause on Patreon they have like free content. Mm -hmm. Where you get like kind of like a little taster, a little sprinkle of like yeah. what you could be in for. Because then it like, it reminds me of how the internet used to be. Where there wasn't really like search engines. You had to know where you were going before you got on the internet. Oh shit. That's what that reminds me of is like, you had to have gone to OnlyFans for a specific creator. I feel like. Hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know. It just to me, it seems like. You are going there with a, a destination in mind. You're not just like going there to like casually browse. That could be like something that they could make better with that site. Because I definitely feel you there. It's like, so what? All, all these creators are just like word of mouth. Well, yeah. And then it's like, that's not fair to the creators is like that they can't just be like found really. I mean, I'm sure they can. I don't know. I wonder it's... if it's like a pyramid schemes system going on. I mean, really, like, fucking everything's just a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> life is a fucking pyramid scheme. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I'm I mean, like, really, life out. is all about networking. Yeah. This whole fucking... And getting people underneath you. Whoa, chill. <laughs> <clears throat> But I was saying, I wonder if it's like a pyramid scheme where you like, you're like a small creator and then you like get shout out or, you know, mm -hmm. do something with like bigger creators and then they like shout you out and then like they're trying to get shout out by bigger creators and it just like keeps going up and up and up and up. Maybe. I mean, that's like exactly the way Twitch is. Like I once heard somebody say that like I was in somebody's Twitch live mm -hmm. stream and somebody said have you ever done a pyramid scheme and the streamer said fuck no i've never done a pyramid scheme that shit's dumb and i was like <laughs> but twitch is kind of a pyramid scheme <laughs> like i feel like i know where this guy's going with this like the chatter because mm -hmm. a streamer 
didn't get it at all. It went way over his head. But the, I think the chat person was like trying to get at something or just maybe asking a general question. Mm -hmm. But it definitely like made me realize like Twitch is literally just a pyramid scheme. Yeah. You are literally at the bottom and you're working, 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 working for a small amount of clientele, mm -hmm. you could say. Yeah. And you're trying to branch out your clientele to other people with smaller clientele. To build up your clientele. To build up your clientele, and you usually reach up, and every time that you're reaching up, you're giving your clientele to them in hopes that also you receive their clientele. Mm -hmm. And it's like, really, only the people at the top with lots of clientele will trickle down those clientele to people that are underneath them, basically in a pyramid form, mm -hmm. shape. Instead of money relating to a pyramid scheme, think of viewers relating to a stream. It's yeah. just the same thing. I was just thinking, was it It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I think it was like, was it D? Yeah, she's like, it's, not it's a, a funnel system. Yeah, she's like, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, turn it upside down, D. And she turns it upside down. And she's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely like that. Twitch is like weird. I was thinking the other day about like how you're such an advocate for like Twitch etiquette. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like... And I don't know if it's just like maybe people don't get rated a lot and so they just like don't know. But I just think about that a lot. Well, yeah, and if you don't have like the Twitch etiquette, then you just don't get rated again. That's like bottom line. Yeah. Bottom line up front. Like really that's what it is. Cause like we rated that one couple streamer one time and mm -hmm. they didn't have proper t Twitch etiquette. And I was like, never again. And I never did. Mm -hmm. But then, like, Birdemus rated him once. Proper yeah. Twitch etiquette. Anytime he's streaming, I'm streaming. Like, I'm going to throw him a raid. Yeah. Fredo, obviously. And it's, like, Proper amazing. Proper Twitch etiquette. Boom. We rate him, like, every time. Well, and it's amazing, too, that how far that etiquette goes. Because just, like, that interaction of, like, like thank you. Like, I appreciate your consideration, basically. And that, like, you're having all these people, like, come to see, like, their pyramid scheme they've got going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, Everybody go check out their Cutco knives. Yeah. <laughs> but, I don't know. I was just thinking about that because it's, like, and how, like, welcoming those people are. They're, like, oh, hey, welcome in. And then how, like, the first time we ever raided Bert, I was, like, how do you play this game? <laughs> <laughs> And, and he's he like, was let like, me show you how. yeah, he's like, let me show you. He doesn't even talk like that. But <laughs> for some reason, like the way his like microphone and everything is set up and just his voice, like mm -hmm. in my mind, it gets translated into Alex Jones. Yeah. So like when I think of Bertimus, I think of like, hey, guys, it's me, Alex Jones. <laughs> but it's like weird because he doesn't have like that kind of a voice like uh -huh. at all. It's very like, like smooth and yeah. deep, not like I'm a crazy person. <laughs> But I don't know. I was just thinking about that the other day because I, I don't know. And maybe like some people are just like a little bit like more like chill and a little more like introverted because the other day I rated somebody and she was just super like, oh, hey, like, how's it going? And you're like, oh, okay, bye. Yeah, I don't know. Like Twitch etiquette really isn't hard. Like Twitch even posted like Twitch etiquette on their own web page to follow just to make the experience like a lot more smoother for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Which like is something that they, you feel like they shouldn't have to. It's kind of like a how to network. Yeah. But it's like, like the checklist would be for Twitch etiquette getting rated is like, thank the person for rating you, mm -hmm. ask them how their game went and tell all of your followers to go follow them back and give them a shout out if you have that command enabled. It's like three things that you have to remember to do. That's pretty easy. Thank you. What were you playing? How was it? Everyone go follow him back. Like go follow him. 
Because then anybody that came over in their stream, hear you being like, follow them, mm -hmm. they're going to be more likely to follow you because they like mm -hmm. obviously support that other person. Yeah. And there's like a higher chance that they're going to come see you when you're like, it's very simple stuff. Very basic. I feel like the handful of times I've been raided, I'm just like in panic mode because I never get raided. Ever. Just have like sticky notes. I'm going to have to be like. like raid script you know <laughs> fucking in case of raid break glass <laughs> that'd be kind of funny that'd be a cool little gimmick <laughs> that is so cute though you just like in case of raid and you like break a little glass what if you get raided twice though it would just have to be like like something set up like that that's like in case of raid and then people just kind of like are familiar with that and translate it as like a break glass, but it's like a little door you just open and there's like... Oh, yeah. You just pull out like a little script. Yeah. I guess that's another thing too, is like introduce yourself mm -hmm. to the people rating because they've never seen you before. Yeah, I, that's the one thing I forget to do is like, oh, like I'm Demi and this is what I'm doing. I'm just like, oh my gosh, hi, hello. How's it going? Welcome. I mean, when you watch other Twitch streamers, you can pick up some good habits just from watching them. Mm-hmm. Except Shroud. Don't watch Shroud. And try to pick up his habits. He got raided and it was like 10 minutes later after the raid, like after the hype in the channel like happened. Then he was like, oh, yo, you raid me? Thanks, dude. <laughs> uh, he's... He seems like he's like in his own little world to and me. he has like 20k people watching him. Yeah. He still interacts with chat though, surprisingly. A 20k people chatting That's impressive like markiplier it's probably the only other person i can think of like with a similar number and markiplier doesn't even like respond to chat i don't think i feel like it'd be so difficult at that point shroud just like looks over and reads one thing and then <laughs> responds to it and then like does it like every 30 seconds or something i guess that's the only way you can do it if you have like a billion people Twenty thousand. Whatever. 21. 21. Okay, 20,000 people chatting, though. Even if there is... Depends on your depends on your watchers, though, too. Mm hmm Depends on your watchers, though, too. What does that mean? Some people... Or depends on your chatters. Some people have, like, 50 people that are watching them, and their chat's, like, almost dead. Yeah. Some people have 10 people watching them, and their chat is almost hard to keep up with, you know? Yeah, I guess that's true. So... Yeah, I guess we've been in that position where sometimes people are so chatty. Where we have like 23 people and we're like, <laughs> oh, we can't keep up. Like literally every one of them is like talking. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh. Well, speaking of pyramid schemes, I saw a post where somebody equated delivery services like DoorDash or Postmates or like Uber Eats or something as like a pyramid scheme basically. And they were, yeah, I was like, that's not really like how it works though. And they were like, the only, the only people that it benefits is the company. And I was like, I mean, yeah, the company's like making money, but like the delivery driver is making money and people are able to receive food without leaving their house because they could go get that. Like they don't have to stay in their house. Like they could go get the food, but they don't want to. It's absolutely nothing like a pyramid scheme. No. It's like not even close to a pyramid scheme. No, it's not. <clears throat> because the only solution, the only other solution first off to Uber Eats is if each and every single one of those companies employed delivery drivers, mm -hmm. which isn't, which is not, financially sound of an idea like could you imagine kfc being like we're gonna employ uber we're gonna employ dr delivery drivers and mcdonald's being like we're gonna employ delivery drivers right yeah that's not feasible they would have like slow nights mm -hmm. where they don't have anybody ordering and then they're just wasting money on people standing around waiting for deliveries and even if they put those people to work well then they would just have like extra hands and they would end up sending people home and then get a delivery and then not have a driver for it. So it would be yeah. a logistical nightmare for companies that don't already have delivery pro programs in place, like mm -hmm. pizzas or like Pizza Hut, Domino's, yeah. shit like that, to have 
some sort of delivery. And it was like weird, I don't know. And it was like a picture of this man's face. He had like a mask hanging off of one ear and he looked really sad, like maybe he was crying. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, I felt like there should be more context to what was going on. I don't know where I saw this, like Twitter or Instagram or something. But I was like, that's not like, it's like the people don't understand what a pyramid scheme is. They just like associate it with bad business practice. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, also like, I mean, like, I don't really have like, I guess a lot of experience to speak from, but I'm like, what, like, what is it about the delivery service that's like only benefiting the delivery company, such as like Postmates or DoorDash? You know what I mean? Because, like, there's, like, safety things in place if that's, like, the issue. Like, I don't know. It was just weird, and I just needed more context. And it was just, like, such a bizarre, broad stroke of a statement to make that I was, like, so, like, what's, like, the issue here? Is that that company's making money? Because everybody wants to make money. It's, like, that they're not paying their workers enough? Because that's, like, an issue. But that's not a pyramid scheme. Right, yeah. I don't know. It was like bizarre and they're like the only people benefiting are the companies and I'm like well the delivery drivers are benefiting too. They're making money. Every delivery they do they make money. They get tips. That's money. They're benefiting in that way and it's like the people that are getting their food delivered to them are benefiting. I don't know. It was just really weird and bizarre. But, I mean, I guess, like, my first thought was, like, maybe it was, like, a safety issue or something. Because then all I could think of was, like, when I was delivering food and that person was, like, oh, yeah, my house number is, like, whatever and a half. And I was, like, what do you mean a half? And they're, like, I live in a backyard. <laughs> yeah. <in> a shed. <laughs> And they're like, no, my house is in the alleyway. But I think the alleyway they were referencing was like literally a stone path next to somebody's house that went to their backyard. And I was like, how do I get to your door? And they're like, my door is in the backyard. And I'm like, this is weird. My dude. door is the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> my house is the backyard. And it's like, I'm sure it was just like a college student paying cheap ass rent to live in some person's shed. And like, that's cool, like you do you. But I was really freaked out and I was like, this is how people get murdered. I pretty much threw the food at the door and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and took a picture. Yeah, I had to take a picture that I left the food there. Someone listening to be like, that was you? <laughs> <coughs> I would die. Um, I, I feel like there's such weird thoughts I have had delivering food going through my head because I'm like what if what if I left the f like put the food at the doorstep took a picture and then just picked the food back up and said like left at the door like enjoy your food like whatever and then just took their food yeah and then just took their food it's pretty fucked up <laughs> I mean I didn't do it but like I was just thinking like what stops somebody from like doing that like then what's what is that I guess if there's like a pattern of your orders are always going missing then that would stand a reason that you were taking them. Yeah, but if you did it like every once in a while. Or like. You know, when they like ordered something that you're like, damn, that looks so fucking good. Like wings. Fucking, yeah, wings <laughs> or whatever. And you're like, I'm just gonna take a picture, say delivered and walk away. I think they would, I think they probably could say like, like went to my door and it wasn't there. Mm hmm. Like they lied, they took a picture, they're liars. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> Uber like, Eats might. I mean, they probably look at your history, but they probably also believe the customer mm -hmm. before they believe the driver, maybe. I mean, the customer is the person who's like paying them the money. Um, I wonder what the whole liability responsibility is. Because let's say you did that, mm -hmm. you went through with doing that. Let's say it was food from like Buffalo Wild Wings. 
Mm-hmm. And you stole someone's wings. Mm-hmm. And they called Uber Eats and said, one of your drivers stole my wings. And they said, okay, we can refund you for the delivery cost. And they go, okay. And then they call Buffalo Wild Wings and say, my, my Uber Eats driver stole my wings. And what, like, what do they do? Do they have an obligation to say, all right, we will refund your food for you and we'll have like new food prepared for you? Or do they just say, dude, somebody came to pick it up. It was paid for. We can't do anything. I don't know. Is there like risk involved ordering from Uber Eats that that potentially could happen to you or? I think she's like tried to eat that piece of wood. Freya, that's too big for you. <laughs> um, I don't know because I feel like maybe one time of it happening, maybe Uber would just eat that cost. <laughs> Uber Eats would eat that cost. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like the <laughs> delivery service would eat the cost and... Freya, that is so big. Freya, it's way too big for you. She's yeah, get out of there. <laughs> She's like, fine then. I didn't want it anyway. What a freak. She was going to drag that away. Find her a little piece of bark or something to play with. Here, Freya. Here you go. Here's a little piece of bark. You want it? Nope. Okay. Wow, what a fucking brat. What a brat. Baby. Baby brat. Maybe she wants to pick it out herself. Yeah, there you go. There's like three right there for you. You Pick it out yourself. Is that really it? She just want to pick it out herself? Yep. Yep. (laughs) Can't wait to have kids. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't know. Just in case she can be picked up on the camera. But, I don't know, I'm expecting to have some like weird stories from delivering. I'm ready. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for all the weird, creepy stories you're gonna share. <laughs> um, like, cause the town we live in isn't like big or anything. So it's, it's weird. Small. It's weird that like, I'm pretty sure I was like at a million dollar house the other day. Well, you say million dollar house, but it's probably, you know, like $300,000 house or something. You think? Yeah. It was like the size of a ski lodge. Okay, maybe it was like 600000 but if you know. look at Zillow, Trulia, yeah. or whatever, house prices, like how much it is to buy a house for what you get, mm-hmm. it's like very cheap here. I was really interested to see, like, not to be like creepy, but I was just curious, like how much that house cost mm-hmm. to like look up the address and then look up it on Zillow just yeah. to see, because I was really interested. It's like a new development area. And all of the houses are like super nice. Like they looked like they were like a little probably more than average, but that one house was huge, like the size of a ski lodge. Um, I thought it was maybe like the community center or something for maybe like that like gated community. But it wasn't because it had like a house number on it. <laughs> oh. Like, I thought it was, it like, was a... big? Yeah, it was really big. Like, especially compared to the other houses around it, it was really big. And it's, really like, one big. helicopter pad? Maybe. Who knows, man. But... It was, like, a weird, out-of-the-way place I would have never guessed. Guessed what? That nice houses would have been there. Oh. There's I just like want to be out there where nobody else is, you know? There's, like, a golf be course Be away from people. A golf course? Mm-hmm. I kind of want to try golfing. Um, I'd want to vlog it. (laughs) So that one day when you were like, let's go golfing. And I was like, nah, that's stupid. Um, now you want to, well, I drove by that golf course and there was this kid. He must've been, he looked like he was probably like college age was a fucking hauling ass in this golf cart. And then it was like, I thought he was going to drive into the street and then he just hooked a hard fucking left. 
And I was like, maybe I could go golfing. <laughs> <laughs> just to drive the golf carts. But then I was like, just to be outside. Yeah, just be outside, like putt around, like not really give a shit if I'm doing a good job or not, you know? Yeah, bring your own golf balls. Like bring a few of them. Or like, just like, so you don't have to return the golf balls. Mm -hmm. That way if you like whack it off into the woods, like you don't fucking care. Yeah, I don't trust the, any wooded areas here. Yeah, because you're not, because I mean like you do want to like get the fuck out of people's way Mm -hmm. when you're like doing holes and shit because you don't want to be holding people up if they're trying to practice and get through their holes and shit but it's not like mini golf where people are like bust busting through them like you like whack your ball pretty far and then you drive your little golf cart closer to it and then you whack it again and i mean a lot of people seem to really enjoy golfing so i think it's just like a nice leisurely outdoor activity doesn't take a lot of like strength or anything like that you know <laughs> yeah I mean, you're wow. like literally just whacking a ball with a stick like that sounds kind of nice yeah but <clears> watching <throat> that those people just like leisurely whatever like do their thing on the golf course i was like yeah maybe i could go golfing and you just bring like a cooler with you and fill it up with like arnie pommies <laughs> why not yeah why not might as well really lean into it yeah like, non-alcoholic Arnie Palmies. Oh, I was thinking alcoholic. Nah, just go get those, like, Arizona Arnie Palmy iced tea or whatever mm-hmm. that aren't spiked. I, I guess mean, you like, are driving a vehicle. You can't really be. Shouldn't be. I mean, when you're out there golfing, you can be, but... Yeah, think about when you're done golfing, right? Yeah, just take a nap on the green. Hammock. Throw that hammock out there. Um... But yeah, those are like a really nice area. I don't know. I'm like excited to do delivery because A, I don't really have to talk to anyone. That's a plus. That's a huge plus. Yeah. B, I can like listen to music and podcasts and my fucking language learning shit. And like I can do all of that, which is great. And then I feel like I'm like going out and kind of like exploring the town a little bit more. And, like, finding things, which is cool. Because then I was like, this is going to be cool because then I can go home and tell you, like, but oh, I found this. the things that you found. Yeah, like, I found this thing. We should go over here and do a thing. Ooh, Monday, we should go to that coffee shop. Oh, I want to go. I want to take it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's really hipstery, but, like, it's great. It's cute. Like, you're going to walk in and you're going to say, I want my house to look like this. Yeah? Yeah. Speaking of content, everybody, we're going to do the video, like a longboarding video. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the weather is good enough on Monday. I didn't even think of that. I didn't think of it either until you just said it. Guys, that's another thing that we have to worry about is like fucking weather. Like, is there going to be a storm? Is it going to be the shittiest weather ever? Or is it going to be like a decent day? Yeah, because like... Monday is supposed to be like super nice. Okay. Supposed to be. So, yeah. Fingers crossed on that. Yeah, because it's just like hard here because there's no natural barriers to the wind. So, because it's just flat as a fucking pancake here. So, like, the weather and the wind and everything changes on a dime, I feel like, here. Yeah. But so, we were actually going to do it today. We're going to go on a little adventure and vlog it. But, um, I woke up too late, so we're going to do it on Monday. That's Demi's next day off that I also have off. And so we're going to go longboard along a river Mm -hmm. and then, and then we're going to go to a coffee shop and maybe we'll vlog the coffee shop and we're going to go to a pizza place that we really like. Maybe we'll vlog that too. I'm excited. Like this coffee shop is so cute that like it makes me want to be one of those people that like just brings my laptop to the coffee shop to like do work edit videos Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do that while you're uber eating while you're waiting for an order yeah i have to get a laptop for that <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta get a laptop now but because i just don't know if my tablet will quite do the trick <laughs> 
but yeah, I don't know. I'm just excited to have a goal of get out there, stay out there. Be out there. Never come back. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's our big goal for the summer and all the nice weather that we have is just to be outside because like the mixture of COVID and then winter time where we live, like we just didn't get outside at all. Like we, like literally the most outside thing we did was go to Oregon and hike the PCT and then we didn't do anything else. Yeah, and I know that's like, I feel like that's more than probably what a lot of people did, but like, I feel like we didn't even go, like be just like outside or like on our porch or anything. No, we didn't. And it like, and then winter here starts early and it lasts for fucking ever. And then also, I mean, like I was on night shift and I hadn't figured out this sleep rotation yet. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of waste, not wasting, but I just wasn't utilizing my time. So guys, what I've been doing for all you night shifters out there that work overnight because like work 12 hours or whatever, I've been going to bed at 8 in the morning and waking up at 3 in the afternoon. And that usually leaves me with enough daytime to, like, actually go outside and do stuff, like, as soon as I wake up. And it's been kind of nice. Yeah, and I feel like we're lucky here, too, because the sun stays up for a long time. Like, I think it doesn't... I've ever heard you say that. We're lucky here. Well... It, all, it can't all be bad, you know what I mean? It, like, it is nice in the summer that the sun doesn't set till like, almost 10 p.m. Yeah. So, like, there's, like, and the added... I don't know what it is about this year, but it's been staying warmer at night. Last year, it was not this warm at night. Mm -mm. I remember it was two years ago, but when my dad came to visit, it was around this time. And it was yep. cold, and it was kind of rainy, and yep. it was gray. Yep. But even when it, even when we did have nice days and it was like nice and hot mm -hmm. outside, it would still drop down to like barely. Yeah, I mean, you could come out with like a hoodie, and mm -hmm. I could come out with hoodie and shorts on, but you would need hoodie and pants. Yeah, it was and that, chilly. And that's how it was in the nighttime. And I was like, do remember? Because we were having fire pits, and I was like, it's fucking cold. Oh yeah, and we were bundled up. Yep. But this year. Man, it's just been nice. I mean, it also was a pretty mild winter, so mm -hmm. that probably all... Is this interesting conversation? I don't know. <laughs> We're just, like, literally talking about the weather, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think, okay, I have to say, I know people are like, ooh, the weather, it's so boring. But, like, it has such an impact on us. It literally dictates what we do. Here it does, yeah. I mean, when you're in a pretty mild weather place, talking about the weather is mild conversation at best. Frey, get out of there. <laughs> what a brat I like how she didn't listen at all mm -mm. but she did get out of there but got out of there with what she went in there for she's like yeah just give me a second I gotta grab this piece of bark here I think she's like eating it no yeah she's eating it like consuming it Is no yeah okay? I don't know I mean you can consume bark it's okay for you to eat it usually I, mean, I guess like, she has a dog she's like I've been lacking fiber <laughs> I'm gonna Google that really quick. I'm pretty sure it's fine. Can dogs eat bark? Can dogs bark? Yeah. Okay. Um, After she's eaten like five pieces, we're concerned. <laughs> so it says tree bark is tasty. The first reason your dog likes to chew sticks is because he simply likes the way it tastes in his mouth. Tree bark contains cellulose, which is a type of fiber. Um, yeah. Freya, are you lacking fiber? Is that what's going on? Yo, guys, I didn't realize there was so many bugs here. <laughs> Literally until today, I was doing a little test footage on my GoPro of me longboarding and I think my brain has just blocked out like how many bugs are flying around in the air 
Like, I'm not even kidding. Because yeah. then we were looking back on the GoPro, and I was like, what the fuck is all that shit flying around? Like, is that... At first, I thought it was my GoPro, like... Glitching out. Like, glitching out and leaving, like, little black specks. And then we were, like, looking, and, uh, and we found out, like, it's just bugs. And we're like, Are, is there seriously that many bugs? Like, I don't remember that many bugs. It's kind of impressive. That your brain just kind of, like, blocks them out? Yeah. How it kind of just blocks out your nose. Yeah, and blocks out all the fucking bugs. Bugging around. Bugging you, bugging bugging us Freya I think I might go to the gym tonight oh yeah 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 get feel a like good workout in yeah I guess it's probably good to go to the gym because you've been working out so much you don't want to like disrupt your flow or whatever I've just been doing the row machine at work, really. Wow, well, I mean, that's still working out. My statement still stands. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's our last three pieces of wood. Okay. That's like right on time. For what? Your My bed? bed time. I don't know why, but that piece of wood mm -hmm. kind of smelled like pancake. Oh, weird. Or like waffle. Mm -hmm. I can kind of smell it. It's weird. It kind of smells like waffle, huh? Like a waffle, yeah. It's probably like a maple, maple tree wood. Hmm. Weird. Is that a thing? Try it. Are you giving her a bunch of wood to eat? Well, it's not going to hurt her. She wants it. She's going to dig in the bag anyway. I like how she grabs it and then like runs away with it. Like, hey. Ooh, Isaac was going to try to get it, but she turned away from him. Good job, Freya. That's right, Freya, stick up for yourself. I just feel so bad because like... Everything she gets, Isaac tries to take it from her. Yeah, and then like... Even if I take it from him and I'm like, no, don't do that. And I give it back to her, then she like doesn't want it. <laughs> Why does she like eating that? Um, on the internet, it said that it tastes good and has a nice mouth feel. For dogs? Yeah. Feels good on their teeth. I'm surprised Isaac isn't eating any. He has had a couple pieces. Who's chewing on something over there? Mm, she's so happy. I mean, they and they like literally just eat that, like. I mean, we could eat tree bark too. I c could not imagine just crunching down on some tree bark like it's a granola bar. I think I'd give it a try. Try it. I know. Come on, yeah. you said you'd give it a try. You think that I could eat it just off the ground? Sure, why not? I guess it is a tree. <laughs> Wouldn't be any different than peeling it off of a tree, I suppose. Yeah, go ahead, try it. freaks me out that it's just on the ground, though. Put it up in the air first, then. Freya's mouth has been, like, on all of those pieces, probably. I think so? You just come up with excuses not to try it? Yeah. Now, whenever we go up to Freya and we go, you want a tree? <laughs> want a tree? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. We said tree. <laughs> Not treat. <laughs> I like that his little <laughs> teeth are like. You want a tree? <laughs> Freya's like, I'm eating, I'm eating tree right now. Okay, what well, we were talking about? We off topic? We fucking yeah. wait? Okay. I went way hard left. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I'm way out in outfield. Yay. Um, I don't know. I feel like being in the setting, it's hard for me to not just talk about literally every weird little tiny thing that comes to my head. Like I'm trying to be like focused, but my brain's also like, but what about aliens though? Well, what about it then? <laughs> Come on. I don't know. I was just like thinking, uh, careful. There was, no, don't do that to me. That's rude. Um, I saw this TikTok of this girl who's 
theory that's allegedly backed by, I guess, that she just said that it's proven somehow. But sh her theory is what I'm going to call it, was that um, humans were created as like a peace treaty of sorts. So like high and low vibrational beings or aliens basically like came together and created humans as like a white flag to like stop fighting. Like how we would, like royals would marry their children together to say, now we're family, we can't fight. Huh. Well, so like Venusians and gray aliens were like, you know what? Let's make a baby together called the human race. We just, so we won't fight anymore. We'll be family. Yeah. Well, I feel kind of abandoned. And then she was just like, oh, like for those of you that feel like you're an alien, like maybe you are or something. Like Katy or Perry. <laughs> All you negative RH blood factor people, you're all aliens. I'm just saying it's weird that that blood type just mysteriously appeared in the 1500s. I mean, I guess just to explain that, there's a theory that if you have a negative blood type, negative RH blood type, mm -hmm. that uh, you're actually of like alien descent or inbred with aliens or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like, the science of blood is, like, relatively new. Um, so people with, like, an RH factor have to have, like, a special shot when they get pregnant because, like, the their... immune system will attack the fetus. Yeah, which is bizarre. Unless you were alien, then it would kind of make sense. Yeah. Um, so it's, like, a really bizarre thing that they theorized was potentially, like, um a mutation is like the scientific reason, right? Because like alien sounds crazy. But like people didn't know what was going on, like why women weren't able to like carry babies to full term. Um, and they also like, there were, fun fact, there was a time in history when people would get blood tests done before they could get married because- Make sure that they weren't aliens or war aliens. Well, it was to see if the woman had the negative RH factor because if she did, they didn't know how to fix it. So they would just say like, you don't get, you can't get married because you can't have babies together. Unless they got married to another negative RH, right? Because mm -hmm. a negative doesn't attack negative. I believe so. <clears throat> if you have like A negative, will it attack O negative? I think it's just the negative factor. I don't quote me on that. I feel like I'd have to look that up, but I think the idea is that if it's just like a neg another negative blood type. Two negatives make a positive? Mm -hmm. Is that where that saying comes from? No, I think it's math. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that checks out. Um, I'm in college. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I guess all of that is to say people didn't really know what was going on with the negative RH factor. And we still don't really know where it came from. Um, cause it appeared in history around the 1500s and it started in royalty and that's where the term blue blood comes from because people with a negative RH factor have a bluer blood like an octopus does cause there's higher, um, copper, copper, which is weird, which is weird. Well, isn't it not that there's higher copper, it's just that there is copper. Oh, maybe. But anyway, yeah, there's something, the copper in the blood is like making it appear blue or bluer, I suppose. Um, but that's where the term blue bloods come from is because royal people were like interbreeding with each other and like that blue blood was just in royal families, which I feel like is an interesting theory that aliens came down and saw the royalty and was like, well, maybe let's like fuck around with them. Like we don't want any of like the plebeians, you know what I mean? We don't want any of those Neanderthals, those peasants. <laughs> yeah. Those peasants out there being like, give me a ball, wah. Because <laughs> I feel like if you went to another planet, you weren't, you probably wouldn't go fuck around with like the people that literally have lice. Yeah, you'd be like, let's let's go talk to the people in charge. That have less lice. Yeah, that have less lice and less leprosy. Yeah, that makes sense. But 
So I just think it's an interesting theory. That was like my mom's theory. And you theory. know that you come from royalty. Yeah, <laughs> I do have um, a king in my bloodline somewhere. I'm and just from a bunch of pig farmers. <laughs> well, you know, what can you do? You win some, you lose some. <laughs> But I just thought that was interesting. And my mom brought that up to me because I think my sister, my mom, and me all had all have, like, negative blood types. Because my sister had to get the shot for her no. baby. She's a negative blood type. Um, but, yeah, it's just interesting. Also, like, that's a weird thing is, like, so many, like, negative blood types. Like, I don't even know. I think my dad has a positive blood type, which is weird. How old do I have a mosquito on me? I spread deep. And we have a fire, so that's kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know. They're resilient here. They just ignore deep. <laughs> and we have like the strong kind too, that's supposed to repel ticks. <laughs> yeah, it like rep repels my allergies right out my nose. That was rough. Every time I spray deep, it makes me sneeze. I'm like allergic to it. No, I don't want to believe that. Yeah, me neither. But yeah, so um, to conclude that story, I'm an alien. The <laughs> end. 100% <laughs> confirmed the alien, Demi's an alien. When the aliens finally make themselves known, they're going to say, all negative blood types, please, uh, please board the mothership. And Demi's going to go, bye. Well, I won't be making any more videos. <laughs> or you're gonna be like, I'm vlogging it. <laughs> I'm vlogging from space, baby. Starlink. <laughs> Just take me with you. Okay. You know, take your little Neanderthal with you. Like, he's like my pet. He's like <laughs> my positive blooded pet. I feel like it's he gives fine. me good Oonga Boonga. Very good, Oonga Boonga. Me good, Oonga Boonga. <laughs> but I just thought that was like a weird theory because she was like, yeah, that's why there's like that missing link between humans and Neanderthals is because we were created from aliens. And I'm like, hmm. I mean, or we just haven't like figured it out yet because we still have a lot of things we haven't figured out yet. So like there's like that. The ocean. Like the ocean. Yeah, we like don't what's know. what's going on down there. Um, yeah. Like, there was, like, I just, like, sometimes think about, like, the coelacanth, you know? We thought he was extinct from the dinosaur times. He wasn't. He wasn't extinct from the dinosaur times. He was still living around in the ocean, and, like, some Southeast Asian fishers caught him. And and like, the ocean is just so huge and it covers like what 70% of our earth oh yeah baby and when you think of like volumetric mass how much space there is actually in our ocean it's like giving me <clears> a weird <throat> sense of dread you know like if you were just to fill our backyard with water mm -hmm. like you couldn't find shit no you literally if there was like one fish in here that you're looking for you would probably almost never find it you'd be very lucky to find it now imagine the ocean. Now you're looking for a coelacanth. What did you say? Coelacanth? Coelacanth, yeah. Coelacanth. 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 <laughs> um, coelacanth exists, and then coelacanth said, I can. <laughs> um, speaking of just, like, open water, uh, the Delos Instagram, I think they had posted a thing where they were, like, open water swimming like in the fucking ocean yikes and they were like what's the deepest water you ever swam in like this water was about 50 meters deep or whatever they, i don't know that's just an arbitrary number i don't remember what it was but it was really deep and i was like that's gross so what's it like, like 500 feet uh 150 feet i thought approximately oh i thought 10 meters was just 10 feet no 10 meters is like 30 feet Oh, okay. Approximately. A meter, a meter is a very, very, very close to a yard. Oh, okay. So it was 150 feet? Mm-hmm. 
And that like freaks me out, man. I mean, after, you know, 25 feet, I think it would all feel the same. <laughs> I don't know, I just like. Just knowing there's so much space between you and the bottom and you're, you know, six feet max. Well, you're five feet. <laughs> But you're five feet swimming at the surface of 150 feet. You um, know, you're like this. There's all of this, or you know, underneath you. And it's all around you. Moving around, all alive. Who knows what's down there looking at you? I think. Looking at your booty. <laughs> like, obviously, like, I love the earth and everything in it. Like, I think it's just so magical and wonderful and how we've like talked about like going sailing and like whatever, but like also there's something like really scary about like what you can't see. There's like and something- you can't see anything in the ocean. Mm-mm. Unless you're in like really clear water, then you can just see the bottom. I don't know, yeah, I guess that would feel better if you can see it, you know, but when you're out in blue water, like you don't, you're not seeing shit. Like when we were hiking in that last place we camped at, like, I think when that storm was rolling in, I feel like it was probably, like, the pressure that was giving us that weird feeling, maybe, or maybe something was out there. I don't know. Just, like, not being able to, like, see into the woods really freaked me out that night. Oh, yeah. That was weird. Well, this is, like, we had cover, mm -hmm. you know? There was, like, the moon. You couldn't see the moon or the stars, mm -hmm. and so it was, like, really, really dark. You know, like, on a night like tonight, even though there's no moon, mm -hmm. the sky is still, like, giving you some illumination. Yeah. And so you can kind of still see stuff around you, but when there's like cloud cover and it's dark, like the, you can't see shit. Yeah. And then I like, know. I feel like clouds after an open sky makes you feel like hunched over and like, yeah, like heavy claustrophobic. And then like those deer were like tromping around the fucking camp. And I was like, yo, I couldn't fucking see either. I'm like, I'm freaked out. Can you leave please? Yeah. Cause then they were like, they were coming like pretty close to us. Mm -hmm. Then you, like you just can't see them at all. So you're like, is that a deer or is that a cougar? Yeah. <laughs> or is that a bear? Chance of it being a bear, very slim to none, but potentially it could be a cougar. Gosh, and I remember when we shone the flashlight out and we saw like eyes and we're like, oh fuck. Yeah, that was literally nightmare fuel. That was like really fucking like freaked me out, but I'd do it again. Hell yeah, I would too. I'd do it all over again. Freak out and all. I feel like that was also like my first time being that far away from like civilization, I guess. Being that like deep in the woods, like, you know what I mean? I've never been like in the shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Never been off the fucking grid. <laughs> yeah. Still had a lot of cell service though, which was weird. That was weird. Satellites. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, technology. And my dad's like, yeah, if you can if you can get some service to give me a call. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to get service on the fucking mountains. Like, as if he wouldn't know. And there was just like a couple times where we didn't have service. <laughs> I know, that was like bizarre. But... Now I understand how these big people are posting pictures of like, you know, how they're like posting stories of them being like hiking up in the woods. It's like, oh, cause there's a service up there. There's like service almost everywhere. I mean, we grew up in a time where if you had a cell phone and you went, you know, to the fucking river, you'd have no service. Yeah. It's weird being like in that limbo sort of like generation where we remember a time where people didn't have cell phones and you'd have to use like your friend's landline at their house or a pay phone to like call your parents mm -hmm. but I also remember a time where like you first got a cell phone yeah but it was like so shitty and then you remember a time where you would go far enough away from like cell towers and stuff that you want to have service mm-hmm and then you would have to wait till you got good service to do anything. And all it was was like texts and calls. Yeah. And then you remember having a first smartphone, but it like never had enough data to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's like weird. And now it's like our phones, we can just like 
go to like remote locations and still somehow have service. It's crazy to me that on my cell phone, it's like not just like a phone, like I can do so much shit with that. I could live stream hiking. Mount Fuji. Yeah, what the fuck? That's crazy. And now you can just do that from like GoPros? Well, it's like through your phone, I'm pretty sure, but. Yeah, but I feel like that's the only way that makes sense to me, but that's still incredible that you could live stream from your GoPro. I mean, I'm pretty sure people set up like a whole little stream, you know, like Andy Milanakis when he was just doing IRL streams, he would mm -hmm. like have like that little mod kit or whatever, like on his GoPro. So it's like picking up his audio and everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the stuff I want to do. I want to have a GoPro and I just want to go live stream from a mountain somewhere. Live streaming from a mountain would be interesting. Um, so I was going to try to take this to an hour and a half, but mm -hmm. it, this shit's all about to die. Oh, okay. We're about ready to run out of battery, so. <laughs> I guess this is the end. Um, hopefully this was like an interesting podcast. Deadcast. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys... Oh, fuck. What? We had said our next dead cast was going to be paranormal. And we were going to read paranormal stuff. Well, this is like a different, like, by the fire vibe. We can always do... We could still do themed, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess we could still do it by the fire. Yeah, it's just like our dead cast, but by the fire instead. This is the warm-up edition. <laughs> So, um, yeah, next time we'll go back through, go back into the Discord and look at those paranormal stories. So mm -hmm. I think we had a couple, right? Yeah. If you guys want to post more paranormal stories before we look at them, now's your chance. Now's the time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the audio. Hope it was good enough because who knows? <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the uh, video of the fire. That's that was a recommendation on our Patreon. So thanks for that recommendation. Super good idea. Okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> That's Demi giving everyone a kiss. And this with Isaac peeing. Great. Thanks, Isaac, for that. It's gotten, like, really smoky. You're also just standing in the smoke. I'm trying to keep the mosquitoes away. <laughs> I'm really curious to hear how this audio...